Okay, so we've finished our home sensing project. We've sort of pseudo finished our gantry robot until we do the kinematics and get all that working. We just don't have time to do that at the moment. And we are also, now that it's coming into summer for us, or you know, what is it, start of May in the UK, we've had a really, really, really sunny start to the year. You can see that we're both quite washed out from this side. And on this side of the room, we have quite a big window with only like curtains. So part of the inspiration for this project is to try and resolve that, but we'll also come into the rest of the project. Hopefully we've sorted out the microphones now. We're looking at a different video editor so that we can improve the quality of some of the videos. So we're just trying to basically step all of the YouTube stuff up one notch. We weren't necessarily expecting to have many people watching the videos. Mm. We were just doing it as a form of accountability, but now that people are starting to watch them, we do want to make sure that we're delivering at least a sort of decent quality product yeah video so let us know how the mics are you can see they're clipped on here and here they're not trailing from the ceiling this time <laughs> that was a good idea um, and we're gonna get into this project now so see you in two minutes this project kind of leads on from our home automation videos previously we mostly looked at sensors and showed a kind of proof of concept for actuators in this one we want to create something that we can actually be quite useful one of the inspirations for this is that I have real trouble sleeping and then subsequently waking up. And when I say a real problem with it, I mean more than just struggling to go to bed on time. Uh, a few years ago, I spent a few nights in hospital sort of wired in to basically an array of sensors to try and work out what was going on with my brain and sort of resolve some of that. But anyway, that's not really that relevant. What we want to achieve is some actuation on some blinds and we're going to do a prototype version of this in the office here to address the sunlight problem. And because these curtains kind of get in the way and look a bit naff, and also because the window is a decent size, to try it out on. So the plan is to have a microcontroller controlling a stepper that is connected to the pulley cord of the blinds to open and close them based on some sort of data. That can either be preset times or an alarm, or for this, we would like to try it by connecting it up to the Met Office API for sunrise or sunset. Yeah, so the idea is that this should be a fully retrofittable module that can go onto existing roller blinds. And this is going to be roller blinds more than anything else. Um, but that's why we want to work with it with the pulley of the blinds rather than just insert a motor into the blind itself, because obviously that then means you have to take all the blinds down, cut them all down to size and things to get the motor into it. So this method is retrofittable. However, there are currently no blinds in here, so we will have to source them and fit them. We will include a brief overview when we do that. We also want the ability to adjust the blind whenever we like, and we will probably do that with a set of buttons. There is also the option to look at with ESP Home Assist, which might be a good way of using this as an alarm clock as well. So there's lots of reasons for us to do this project, but the project itself shouldn't be too challenging. And we're going to go over some of that. We have basically already done all the constituent components in the previous videos. We used steppers in the Gantry robot. We, we sent data over Wi-Fi to the ESP in the home automation videos. We've done a decent amount of CAD already, so we just need to bosh it all together. So the kind of idea of this is basically as follows. We've got a blind, we're gonna fit that into this window frame across here. This will have a pulley on it, down this side. We want to design and print the pulley for the stepper at the bottom here that will go in there and that's going to be the sort of the challenging bit. Attach the stepper to a mounting plate. This is going to be separate. We're going to have a little stepper motor and then connect up all the wiring, make sure all of this works, a couple of buttons for that to go and then this bit is going to basically go into here as a retrofitable module that can just sit in there with the custom pulley on the stepper or the custom gear onto the stepper attaching it to the pulley and this will then actuate the blinds that will come down here. That's probably a very messy drawing. This is how I tend to design things to start with and probably explains why they always go wrong. <laughs> anyway. And that's pretty much the overview. So we are going to break off from this format and start working on these bits, which you'll see now. Now onto the good stuff. First of all, I'm going to just get the thing spinning. If you haven't watched our introduction steps video, there's a card on screen now for you to watch it. In that video, we use an Arduino to control 
a stepper motor or multiple stepper motors. However, for this project, we're utilizing ESP32 due to its Wi-Fi capabilities. However, we have to use MicroPython for ESPs, so there's a little bit of code translation required. The workflow and control is exactly the same, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Later on, we can then build off of this code to control the motor when certain buttons are pressed or from data from an API. And if you get stuck, refer back to our, our previous video on wiring up stepper motors. So, even for the future, recording was bad, so I'm going to redo it. But essentially, I'm setting the button pins. These had to be pulled down because when the button broke connection, it was floating. So we had to pull it down for a clear reading. And then everything else in this part is essentially from the stepper video. So if you need any of the code for that, please refer to it. And I've just had to convert it into MicroPython because we're using an ESP32 to control this. Later on, I plan on controlling it over Wi-Fi. But for now, it's just doing buttons. And I'll show you it working now. So, a couple code fixes later. What I had to change was this pin. So instead of these big capitals, they were actually correct. If I press this button, it moves anti-clockwise. If I press this button, it moves clockwise. If I press none of them, it doesn't move. And if I press both, it doesn't move. Okay, so I've turned the camera, you get a lesser seen viewpoint from here. So this side is all of the worktop, the back bench, the gantry robot, things like that. This is where the magic happens normally. And this behind me is a very bright window that normally blinds us. And if I step to the side, you'll see that come through on the camera. So this is what we're gonna be fixing. We already picked up a blind. It's slightly too big for the window. Obviously, if you've already got blinds in your window, you don't need to do any of this stuff. But basically, I'm gonna measure up the window, cut this down to size, fit the blind to the window, and then we'll retrofit everything else into that as if the blind was already installed. I'll put this onto like sped up because this is gross to look at, and then I'll probably do a little bit of voiceover on the top of that because obviously I have lots of interesting things to say. Not. So this is the sort of thing I used to do a lot of in my old job. I've done loads of these over the years. You just kind of measure up pretty roughly because these things are pretty roughly fit and cut this down. And you'll see when I come to roll this later that actually I've cut that side really, really poorly with that pair of scissors and I should have just laid it out and done it properly with a standing knife. The nice thing about this is you get a bit of editing magic where it looks like I only had to test fit it once, whereas in actuality, I did it about four times. Okay, so I've added a little bit more code onto the controller and essentially it connects to Wi-Fi so all the same thing with the pins, with the buttons, same thing with the rotation, I've just changed it slightly and now it works on a timer callback and this basically allows it so that we can call it at different frequencies a lot simpler. One issue I found with this was that when it was waiting for data it would block the interrupt which I didn't know was a thing. If you've ever had anything like that this line of code fixed it. But essentially what we need to do, I run this, I run this, and I go and I send clockwise. As you can see, it spins clockwise. If I tell it to go counterclockwise, it spins counterclockwise. And if I send it any other thing, it just doesn't move. And this will be helpful when instead of just a please send a direction code, this connects to an API, or this can be, you know, that the, the manual buttons still work or well, anything like that. Okay, so you can see here that Ethan's starting to work on the stepper motor, which I think he's got mostly working from the computer. What I need to do is create a pulley that can take this sort of bead chain and fit on the end of the stepper so that it can actually activate the blind. In here, this is from the end of the blind, so in here there should be a pulley and we can kind of see how that one moves so we're just going to take this apart and get that so we'll just pop that out of there and then on here there is this little spring loaded thing so we'll just grab oops, rogue snips appeared we'll grab these pliers we're just gonna prise this out of there like so 
take that out and then that's our that's our thing that we need this will be the right sizes for these beads so a little trick for tr translating things from the real world into CAD we've got this which is a 3d printed mount for this ring light and this just sits in the top there the ring light then plugs into our 12 volt din rail power on the din rail power on the ring light and then all we need to do and this is a neat little trick for CAD take a cutting board these are 10 centimeter squares uh, sorry these are one 10 millimeter squares stick this on the top stick this somewhere in there like so you just about see that so the idea here is that if we take a photo in our camera app on the PC when we take a photo of this so when we put this into CAD we can then scale this so that one of those squares is 10 mil and then we've literally got a perfect template so I'll jump into the CAD and do that now so over to Fusion 360 import the image at the moment this is very small we'll just kind of like zoom in on that and then measure up one of these squares as its current size so these are looking to be like 1.2 mil per square so we're going to go and find our calculator 10 divided by 1.2 is 8.3 let's scale all of that up by sort of 8.3 and then this is actual size so now we can just go in with the with the, with with the CAD stuff uh, I'm not great at the CAD stuff and we'll basically just template this in CAD and this is how a lot of the CAD that I do starts especially if I'm trying to do something that retrofits into something else or you know is by a specific thing this is just quite a neat way of knowing that yeah maybe it's not going to be perfect but it's a really good starting point and from here if we need to do any edits we can they won't take long whereas trying to design it all um, with just measuring things and then sort of drawing it out is much more challenging so we'll go through if anybody knows of a better CAD tool than Fusion then please let me know we do a lot of 3d printing for our projects and we use this because we have the educational license for it at the moment so I think for now we're sort of fine to use that um, but maybe we need to maybe we need to reach out to one of the online CAD softwares for a sponsorship or something finally uh, finally get some new stuff coming in because we are running out of supplies for our for our videos um, so yeah we're just gonna like frame this out in the in the actual pulley and one thing that I didn't take a photo of and I should have done was that there was a split in the middle of each of the teeth of the sort of gear bit or the cog bit there was a split in the teeth to allow the string to sit in there so what I do here is I design up half of it and then take that half and basically flip it and mirror it and so there we've got a split in the teeth and that's kind of it for the the pulley section we'll just do the center hole for the stepper motor shaft and that I did measure by hand and it was like 3.4 mil or something on the flat face so we just take a flat face where that's the right amount do that and then this I'm sure that I'm going to come to regret this in the future but here decided to make a post and put a little hole in this post to allow for a sort of an insert nut so that in theory if we melt an insert nut into the 3d print we can then use a small bolt just to tighten it up onto that post and hopefully avoid any slipping I mean hopefully there wouldn't be any anyway but it takes the pressure off the actual structure of the print and we will see we will see how that works when we come to do that so that's that little hole there and that's done off to the printers all right so we think that's probably going to be it for this video for us to keep to our upload schedule we need mm -hmm. to get this basically edited and out the door what in the next couple of hours yeah we've got a busy week at uni this week there's a lot of deadlines for us ethan's had his head in <laughs> a stm <laughs> microcontroller on this little micro mouse robot so that's what we'll be doing all night now yep um <laughs> the file has been sent to the printers we're just waiting to get that back from them and then we can start assembling everything and putting it all into place the blind is installed it's currently open because we worked out another issue, which is with the blind down, 
this becomes a bit of a, like a CD sultry kind of room. Actually, yeah. it's not too bad. I was expecting it to be worse. Yeah. You turn off this. Uh, there's still a bit of a glow from here, but it, but it's so much better from how it was. I think we're probably also going to start working on some lighting solutions for this as well to get this done. So that'll be next week. Um, and then the week after we'll finish off this once we get the bits back from the printers and then I'm going away quite a lot over the summer so we're probably going to split up and do videos individually or bits where like we cameo in the videos rather than sitting here together in this room because we're just bouncing around all over the place over the yeah. summer so got quite a fun project I'm hoping to can work and that's going to be based out yep. of my workshop which is going to be pretty wild um, anything else you think we need to cover um, not particularly um, in the next video we plan on pulling these down from, a, from an API potentially you know automating this somewhat so I'm looking forward to that yeah it'll be good fun gives you an excuse to stay behind the computer <laughs> <laughs> you know me yeah and I'll get into the workshop cool I think we'll we'll call that there um, let us know what you think sorry if this one's been a little bit lacking of any sort of finality um, previous videos we've split them up over like the well, the gantry robot and the, the sensors were over four videos and then we had it was quite sort of linear and sequential in the way that they worked this one's a bit more ad hoc in that we've banged out as much as we can for this deadline we're going to have to finish it off on the next one and that and yep. that it works we maybe even do a summary video afterwards just to really milk the content so <laughs> uh, yep yep <laughs> no no oh. that's it from us see you later bye for now <laughs>